Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Not Me and today we are going to study the blood supply of the heart. So definitely our heart is an organ that is supplying blood or the oxygenated blood to the entire body. However, it can't just do that selflessly. It has to be supplied as well because the heart muscle cannot contract or work without oxygenated blood. So where this is the system that is mainly having the function to supply your body with oxygenated blood. This system that you can see in the grooves, coronary sulci and the surface of the heart, this entire area, you can see these vessels. These are the vessels that are supplying your heart. The arterial and venous supply make up the blood supply of the heart. First, let's discuss the arterial supply, which is severely important because it involves the right and left coronary arteries. Let's begin with the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery basically arises from the ascending aorta. As you can see, the root of the ascending aorta is hidden, but this is the ascending aorta. This is the arch of aorta and then the descending aorta. From the ascending aorta, just at the root, there are three sinuses. One of the sinus is called the right aortic sinus. And from that right aortic sinus of the ascending aorta arises your right coronary artery. Once right coronary artery has arised, it enters in front of the right auricle into the atrioventricular groove of the right side or the coronary sulcus. Now you know why it's called the coronary sulcus as it lodges the coronary artery. So the right coronary artery, once it enters the coronary sulcus, it gives branches to the right atrium, which are not visible. They are minute branches. And after that, it gives its SA nodal or sinoatrial nodal branch in 60% cases, which goes to the upper part of sulca terminalis. The SA nodal branch is its first branch. And then as it moves along the coronary sulcus and comes around the right border of the heart, it gives a branch called the right marginal artery or the right descending artery, which supplies your right border of the heart, mainly formed of the right ventricle. When it comes behind, it gives a branch. It gives a branch to the AV node in 80% of the cases. AV nodal branch supplies your AV node of the conducting system, after which it finally becomes its terminal branch in 67% cases, the posterior interventricular branch, which supplies the posterior interventricular groove. From this branch, we determine who is going to be cardiac dominant, which we'll talk about later. So that was the basic course of your right coronary artery. So overall, what did the right coronary artery supply? Well, first it gave atrial branches that were minute, so it supplies the right atrium. Then it gave its sinoatrial nodal branch. Hence, it supplies the SA node of the conducting system in 60% of the cases. Then it wound around the border of the right side and gave a right marginal branch to the right ventricle. Hence, it supplies the right ventricle. And then when it came to the crux of the heart, it gave supply to the AV node of the conducting system in 80% of the cases. And finally, if in 67% of the cases, it gave the posterior interventricular branch and the posterior interventricular branch is responsible for supplying the interventricular septum in its posterior one third. And it also supplies the adjacent part of the left ventricle. So it gave supply to the IV septum, 67% cases. And finally, it gave supply to part of the left ventricle via its posterior interventricular branch. Now let's talk about the left coronary artery after which we'll touch the topic of cardiac dominance. The left coronary artery also arises from the sending aorta in the left aortic sinus after which it passes between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle and emerges at the coronary sulcus. Once entered the coronary sulcus, it will give its first branch called the anterior interventricular branch. In other words, also known as the left anterior descending branch, very important branch. This LAD branch 
or the anterior interventricular branch that it gives right at its beginning is going to supply your anterior two thirds of the interventricular septum and adjacent part of your right ventricle. And then it goes all the way to the apex and anastomosis with the right posterior interventricular branch. And that's how the anastomosis and the arterial supply ends. Once it has given the LAD branch, it itself becomes the left circumflex artery. So the left circumflex artery will pass towards the left. And as it passes the left border, similar to the right, it also gives a marginal branch, which supplies the left border of your heart, which is the left ventricle mostly. It's giving even atrial branches that are not visible to the left atrium. And in 40% cases, it gives supply to the SA node. In 20% cases, it's supplying the AV node. And finally, it reaches its end right here before entering the posterior interventricular groove. In some cases, the left coronary artery might be the one that becomes the posterior interventricular branch supplying the posterior one third of the interventricular group. In this case, the person will be left cardiac dominant. However, we will go even more into the depth of this later. What are the areas of supply of left coronary artery overall? So first we remember that it gave the LAD branch. The LAD branch is going to supply anterior two third or most of the interventricular septum, a part of the right ventricle. Then it, with its branch, it's also supplying the left atrium. And since it's mostly lodging towards the left side of the heart, it is going to be the major supply of your left ventricle. And finally, the SA nodal branch in, obviously 40% of the cases, the AV node branch comes out only in 20% of the cases, and the posterior interventricular branch only in 15% cases. So now let's touch the topic of cardiac dominance. I am sure by now you've got an idea of what it means. The cardiac dominance is determined by which artery will supply your posterior interventricular groove. So if in 67% cases, this posterior interventricular branch is given by the right coronary artery. Hence, the heart is said to have a right dominant pattern. And then there are 15% cases or one thirds of the heart that are supplied in the posterior interventricular groove by the left coronary artery and the right has nothing to do with it. The right ends right here while the left is going to come and supply the posterior interventricular groove. In that case, the heart is said to have left dominant pattern. This occurs in 15% cases or only in one third of the hearts. Finally, when both of the coronary arteries are supplying the heart equally, then it is known as co-dominance. This occurs in 18% cases. So this was a little concept of your cardiac dominance. In the next video, we'll study about the venous drainage of the heart and complete the blood supply of the heart. Thank you so much for watching.